Hello again everybody, John Mead here with our most recent updates on Rising Star Expedition from South Africa. In this update we're going to try and cover parts of three days and it has been a busy time out in South Africa with the members of Rising Star. So we're going to jump right into things here and if you focus on the right side of the video here, down here, um, day 16 over 450 hominid fossils are cataloged. So the numbers just keep rising. This is absolutely just a stunning event with the quantity of what's coming out. But this isn't all about the quantity. It's a large degree responsible for what's going on is the quality of what's happening there beyond just the fossils. Um, this great tweet, this is today's evolutionary science, not the science of 50 years ago. And this is from a... Uh, a blog post by John Hawks on the National Geographic blog that's following Rising Star. I've linked to it on the page you probably saw this from, so please check that out. But basically the idea is two things. The technology that they're using to scan these fossils, to identify what they have even before they touch them, is amazing. And in addition, probably even more amazing and unprecedented is that the sharing that's going on. The fact that I am able to tell you what's going on with this expedition on a day-by-day -day basis has never happened before in the history of paleoanthropology. So that is just stunning. And just to support that here, Ali and Becca Skyping with the school in Taiwan while fossils are being found underground and sorting hominins in the science tent. You know, lifetime science happening all around the world and in particular, and I know I've enjoyed my part in this being able to share with young students so that they the next generation can get excited and involved in this this is just not for PhDs alone anymore and then back on site Dr. Berger watching Pierre City clean a distal humerus again knowing what's coming out of the ground um, in that sort of time is really really impressing Scott Williams, our vertebrae man, arrives. We have not had any verts as in vertebrae, but as soon as he set foot on site, they're vertebrae. Absolutely amazing and how appropriate that when the expert shows up, they have something to work on. Nice bit of serendipity there. And then we come up here, and the uh, whole idea that um, there is uh, Twitter coming out of South Africa to share all this with us, and I've had several students and others ask, well, is Dr. Berger doing his own tweets? Or I'm sure he has some lowly assistant that does it for him. Well, I can promise you, and, and I've told people even before seeing this, that I had every reason to believe Lee was doing his own tweets. And here we have an example of him photographing uh, the screen at the command center, sending out with his tweets. So that's a neat thing to see. Um, no surprise there if you know him. And then boom, here we come. Fossil 500 is in the science tent. So the numbers just keep coming out, keep coming out. And then here from Ed Young, who's a uh, writer at National Geographic. The stream of post tweets and videos from Rising Star is what real SciComm looks like. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. This is setting the standard for the future of science communication on you know, future expeditions. And then here we have from John Hawks, Paleo Bone Girl, that's Lindsay, carefully working where there are plenty of fossils yet to uncover, and a view from down here, and I believe this is part of the puzzle box, and just as to impress upon those of you who are seeing this, you get a sense of where they've begun to excavate, and this is an inch or two deep at the most, so there's hardly a great depth in the excavation yet. And they've, you know, they're well over 600 fossils yet, so that's really, really impressive. And this is something, you know, I couldn't agree more with this, that uh, I'm preempting all my usual class material with Rising Star today. Thanks for being so accessible. And I'm having the exact same thing. Before we broke for the American Thanksgiving holiday, Every day in my class, we were getting, doing updates and finding out, and I'm dealing with middle and high school students. I think Megan here is at the college level, but just again, unheard of. And then we keep uh, 
Moving on here, and this is from uh, David Dobbs, a New York Times uh, science writer. Only Thursday, but for God's sakes, killing us is part of a truly inspiring open science human fossil dig. Absolutely true. Okay, Lots of press getting the idea of what's going on here. And here's a funny one you may remember back a couple days ago. There was the, we need a bigger tent comment. Uh, referencing the Jaws movie and Dr. Berger points out that there is a link from the movie Jaws with what's going on in South Africa because Richard Dreyfus narrated the Malapa show Malapa being where Dr. Berger and his son Matthew discovered Australopithecus sediba so and I was interested I did not know that uh, there had been a National Geographic special on Malapa and sediba a video called the two million year old boy and I hold in my hands right now my uh, my own copy of it which I'm looking forward to seeing later tonight we continue along here with John Hawks now coordinating the last lift of the day the scanner needs to come up for cleaning it's been underground for 12 days so we will see that here in a little bit Dr. Berger understands that the president of the NRF, which is the National Research Foundation in South Africa and UNESCO, just left the site and were blown away by the team and what they saw. I have no doubt about that. This is mind-blowing on a number of levels. And then John Hawks uh, with our sci-fi reference of the day. Um, Ashley has started giving the scanner a good scrubbing. Looks like equipment that belongs on Tatooine from Star Wars. And then here we have a picture of after it's been cleaned and retested. Here is John Hawks on the right getting scanned by Ashley. And we see uh, how small this scanner is so it's able to get into the cave and do its work. And then the question of course is, well, what do the results look like? And here we see the, uh, the view of John Hawks scanned. And that would be a 3D scan. It's hard to appreciate on the 2D nature of our screen but that's what you're seeing there. Moving on. Okay, if you want to know more about Rising Star, um, Lee and John Hawks are going to do a Reddit talk on Monday, November 4th, 4 to 6 p.m. UTC. So definitely, if you're interested, look that up. I'm sure there'll be more about that coming out later. Here we are. 600 numbered elements of fossil hominins are in the bag. Won't have to wait long for number 700. The numbers just keep coming, but again, that's hardly the most important part of this expedition. The quality of what's happening is, in my mind, much more significant. And it's bedtime, so the end of the day there, but let's not stop. Let's keep going and start with day 17. And we see um, Rick and Andre are on safety. They're the cavers. Marina, Ellen, and Alia in the main chamber. And then talking about the press coming off, off to storm the castle, 60 minutes is there. Uh, GoPro cams are joining her in the fossil chamber today. So GoPro cams are probably the only thing that's large enough to get down in there in a useful way. And the fact that 60 minutes is covering this, so I imagine uh, before too long we'll get reports there, which is interesting. From the science tent we're finding out that John, is, they're setting aside catalog number 601 to 700 for assignment. The advanced team is now resuming at 701 underground. So we've crossed the 700 barrier. And then here Hannah's working to tag and photograph specimens with a forensic camera before removal from the surface. Again, being incredibly detailed technologically to know what they have before it actually leaves the ground. That is a pleasantly uh, important thing. It's important that we see that. With the science tent and advanced team working together on fossils, we may collect 100 within two hours. And I first read this and there was a little bit of concern. That seems like a lot in a very short period of time. And a number of other people I think had the feeling that are they just randomly starting to scoop stuff up, which would sound kind of irresponsible. And quickly we get, uh, get word that that's not the case, lest you think we're being careless. This is a collection after a long period of prep at the end of the day. So thanks for that clarification. And that brings us to the end of the day there. Okay, We're looking, and this is the end of November 22nd, wrapping up for the afternoon. Going to kick back, and they much deserve that. And then 
We now update to the beginning of today, Saturday, um, November 23rd, and gave the underground astronauts the day off. Where are they? In the cave, digging up hominins, and in the science tent, sorting. So the folks who are down there don't want to stop working. Again, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And as this tweet down here says, who would want the day off at a once-in-a-lifetime experience? And I would have to uh, have to agree there. So here we go. We're back back doing things. And Lindsay E's uh, tweeting us here that uh, sorting through sediment bags for treasure with Ellen, and we'll zoom in on that. And so here you can see in the uh, science tent, this would be sediment that's come up from the cave, sorting out dirt from potential fossils, which we'll we'll head on over here and be looked at much more closely. Then we continue on along here. Okay, Lindsay again. Um, OMG, Sarah Carter from 60 Minutes just Instagrammed me. That's um, a neat thing, and this may be the picture. Yep, there it was. So and there, there's a uh, great view of Lindsay. Looks like coming out of the cave. Okay, that's kind of an exciting thing. So even our celebrities in the cave are a bit starstruck. Word from Dr. Berger, number 800 just bagged underground. Wow. So the quantity, again, keeps coming up. And now Ellen has her first blog entry on the National Geographic blog, which, if you haven't heard me say it before, it is absolutely amazing. If you're following things through me here, thank you very much, but you need to make sure you also hit the National Ge Geographic site. It is amazing. And that is, again, that link is at the bottom of my blog page here. So congrats for Ellen on that. Advanced team is pulling out for the day now, bringing up two more bags of fossils. And then Marina, up from the advanced chamber, headed for the showers. This is the best day off ever. And I would tend to agree with that. And then here we see a question. Um, three full excavation days left. The advanced team's goal is 1,000, but we will easily surpass that. So that is just absolutely incredible. And then as part of the day off, they took a field trip to Malapa, the site, as I said earlier, of the discovery of Australopithecus sediba. Okay? And there, when I was visiting in uh, July and saw Malapa, they were getting ready to have approval for a semi-permanent structure to protect the site so that they could go in and do further excavations. And so here you get a site, and this is courtesy of Ellen's Twitter feed, to um, here you see the site in under construction, so lots of work going on there. I can only imagine, given how many fossils I, I saw were near the surface, how careful this construction team is having to be. But it's neat to see that structure going in. There will be lots of cool stuff to come out of Malapa in the future. And then finally, John Hawks from the nighttime sky, bright stars tonight with many meteors and a long streaming fireball. So that takes us up to the present time. Thanks for being a part of this. Glad you're following, and we'll keep going as long as the expedition goes. Thanks again. Bye.